I'm Ron and I'm back again. You know, already for another round of sports reviews. Tonight I'm reviewing the first day of NFL Wild Card Weekend. The first game, Houston Texans beat the Buffalo Bills 22 to 19. And then the second game, the Tennessee Titans beat the New England Patriots 20 to 13. And I will review them in chronological order, starting with the Texans Bills game. Uh, it was a good game. It was a pretty good game. The Bills struck went struck out to a 16 to nothing lead and their defense was looking great. Their offense was looking great. Josh Allen caught a touchdown pass. Then they kicked three Yeah, three field goals to get to 16 points. And then their defense broke down like a stat house of cards. And then the offensive line just started looking so horrible. Deshaun Watson played like a man possessed. Brought back the Texans from 16 down. And got them the lead to 19. Then the Bills came back in the craziest of fashions. Got to 19. 19 tie with a field goal. Then played in overtime. Texas, Texas screwed up their first drive. Buffalo screwed up their first drive. And they had good field position. They could have got a field goal try. But then they got pushed back. And then the Texans had the craziest last drive ever to seal the game with a field goal. But they almost sacked Deshaun Watson on third down to make it fourth down. Outside of field goal range, the Bills, and he just broke out of that sack, ran out of the pocket, threw it, and got a first down on a third and 13? Yeah? I don't. I think it was more. Yeah. And then, Kaimi Fairbairn kicks the field goal to end it. The Texans go on to face the Kansas City Chiefs. I know. Yeah, the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, next week. Because Tennessee beat the Patriots. They get to face the Baltimore Ravens. Ooh, gonna be a fun one to watch, ain't it? No, it's not, but whatever. Crazier stuff have, has happened, as you can see today. Um, but let me talk a little bit more about this Texans-Bills game in depth. Josh Allen looked good for the first half. Like, first half and then half to the third quarter. Then he started realizing what happened, and he just started choking. It was kind of like uh, Nick Fitzgerald or... Hmm, I don't know. Hmm. Not really Peyton Manning. I don't want to be... I don't want to be mean to Peyton Manning for that, because, you know, no. Um, not Peyton Manning. Maybe more like a, the reverse of a Tim Tebow. Speaking of, this is the first time... At, a wild card game went into the went into overtime since the Tebow game. So, yeah, that's kind of crazy, ain't it? But Josh Allen in the second half, he just inexplicably took long making his reads. His offensive line broke down. He couldn't do anything. Frank Gore was getting stopped. He couldn't do anything. He he just couldn't really make his reads at all. And I I was like, "Okay, I see Sort of open, not open. Like, I saw what he didn't see. And I'm not even a quarterback at anything. I've never even played the game of football. And I saw, oh, that's where you should go. But you're just holding on to it for some reason. Or you're going to try to run. It's like, dude, dude, what are you doing? And it didn't help that Deshaun Watson came back on them. He had a 20-yard touchdown run to start it. Then the Bills' Josh Allen fumbled. The Texans scored off of that 14. Well, no, they got a two-point conversion, which would make it 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I think they did try for two. To, well, they had to to make it 16. There you go. Um, yeah. Scored off of it, and uh, they had the momentum when... Yeah, then they got the momentum, and then they kicked another field goal. Wait, no, they kicked a field goal, then they got another touchdown to make it 19, yeah. And then the Bills kicked a field goal to tie it, and then they were, yeah. But the Bills' defense, until that second half, played so well. And then, I guess, Bill O'Brien had good halftime adjustments. 
she told Deshaun, here's what you should do, and here's not what you should do, and then do what you should do, not what you shouldn't do. But I was surprised that the Texans were that bad going into the half. I was like, I thought they were unstoppable, sort of, so to speak. But they weren't. They weren't, and that was kind of crazy. And Deshaun Watson played out of his mind. That was the Deshaun Watson I, I, I know of. Not, not the Deshaun Watson that I saw early in the game. That's not what I think of him as. But in the second half, oh yeah, that, that's what I think of him as. And then you had DeAndre Hopkins and Kenny Stills and Daniel Fells. That's more like it. And the Bills just fell apart everywhere. All three phases. Even special teams. Offense and defense especially, but even special teams. Joe Moorhead couldn't even have it. Well, ugh, I don't want to go there. He probably would collapse like that, honestly. I mean, State did against Louisville. Why am I even talking? Um, whatever. But yeah, Texas played, or the Texans figured out how to play it, and they played it very well. And sadly, the Bills let themselves lose. They went off the deep end. Like, the way they played offense in that last three minutes plus overtime was mind-numbing. Like, actually mind-numbing. Actually mind-numbing. They batted the ball out. Josh Allen didn't even try to throw because he had no time because he wasn't completing his reads. He just held it out like, oh, what should I do? What should I do? Oh, I'm going to run. Oh, there. Boom, by the time he hits, either he's in incomplete or it gets batted down. He's lucky he didn't throw a pick six, which probably would have been a better ending, but whatever. But yeah, basically the Bills just lost it. He made rookie mistakes and he lost because of it. And then the Texans finally overcame bottle job Bill O'Brien, so something there, ain't it? I got that game right. Surprisingly enough, because, yeah. But then the second game, as I said, the New England Patriots lose to the Tennessee Titans 20-13. to And I'm not surprised, honestly. I am not surprised. I am not surprised one bit. New England had a, their offense was horrible. Horrible. One touchdown and two field goals. Two they couldn't muster anything more. And their defense kept them in the game for most of it. Well, mostly the second half. But yeah. what? And the Titans. They only were up by one point until Tom Brady threw a pick six with nine seconds left to go. They basically window dressed it to make it worse. But it still was a loss in wild card weekend. The last time we were there, 2010, 29, 2009's playoffs, we lost to the Ravens. This year, we lost to the Titans, coached by none other than Mike Vrabel, former New England Patriot. Caught a couple of touchdown passes from Tom Brady, I think one in the Super Bowl, and I think another one in the playoffs, and the rest were re regular season. But Mike Vrabel, Mike Vrabel, man wearing a G-Lay. A freaking linebacker wearing a G-Lay. Okay. Sure. He is a Belichick disciple. I can tell that. I can tell. Oh. That, that's exactly why we lost, yeah? If we played a team that didn't have a Belichick disciple, we probably could have somehow pulled it off. But he knew exactly what we were doing. Fair play. Fair play. Even that 45-second, like, waste time by not punting and taking two delay of games and two false starts. Yeah, that was, that was a masterful. I don't even think I've seen Belichick do that. But okay. The offense for New England was putrid. Yeah, the Patriots' offense was putrid. Putrid horrible. I have never, well, this whole season I've seen an offense so horrible that even Joe Moorhead wouldn't say that that was a good offense. Even State's offense was better than theirs. Mississippi State could have beaten the Patriots with that offensive whatever they had this year. 
Both sides. You know what would be so funny that I would just love? That if who you know who I want to see replace Josh McDaniels as offensive coordinator for the New England Patriots next year? Joe Moorhead! I don't know why. I think he'd actually be better. He at least knows how to be an offensive coordinator. As long as he's not the head coach. He doesn't have to dole out punishment. I mean, it's the NFL, so maybe it's not like college anyway. But hey, as long as he has some good players on the offensive side of the ball, he knows how to be an offensive guru. Isn't that the, basically the way they're selling Josh McDaniels to be a head coach anyway? Okay. It's like, hey, let's just swap. Uh, I don't want Josh McDaniels at Mississippi State either. I think I'd lose my head. He may be a little bit more harder on discipline, but he's still the same type of head coach. Doesn't know anything. Okay. But again, Patriots offense, putrid. If you only get one touchdown and two field goals in a game against the Tennessee Titans, even if their head coach is an old Belichick disciple who used to play for the team, I don't care. You deserve to lose. And if you lose to the Miami Dolphins to be in a situation like this, again, you deserve to lose. Stop telling me that this was just a fluke. It's not. I knew it deep down. I'm I'm a Tom Brady fan, let's be honest. I've grown up with him being on the Patriots my whole life. But the way I I, I am a Patriots fan. I'm not a fan of Robert Kraft, let's be honest. Because here's the thing, or 2019 Robert Kraft, so to speak. Why? Because he basically crippled this team at the knees. Because his idiot head, his old 80-something-year-old idiot head, he's probably younger, I really don't care. He's like, oh, I need to make this up because I got caught getting a handy at a, at a beauty, beauty parlor. I need to make this up. Oh, Antonio Brown lost his head? Let's get rid of him. Let's do what the opposite of the Patriots would do. Get rid of him. Not, oh, you know, who cares about what they're saying? Let's keep them and see where this goes. Oh, Josh Gordon is getting sort of hurt and I have a chance to get Muhammad Sanu? I'll get rid of Josh Gordon and just let Jacoby Myers play. Oh, okay. Um, makes no sense to me. I like Gunnar Olcheski. I'll give him another shot. He got hurt. Good job. Um, you could have had two... Maybe, well, the Sanu thing would have never happened if uh, Antonio Brown didn't lose his head, but you would have had Antonio Brown slash Mohamed Sanu and Flash Gordon. You got rid of two or three. Good job, old man. Good job. Uh, you make me sick. You make me sick because you grew a conscience. You grew a conscience and became basically a complete and utter SJW because you got caught getting a handy. And then you were like, oh, I got to get rid of players that rock the boat. You still found a way to cheat with the taping the sidelines at the Browns game or whatever. And you still found a way to do that. And then, well, you get rid of the players that could have won us a damn Super Bowl and had us a 19-0 season just because you got caught doing something stupid. And then you buy players for the New England Revolution and Bruce Arena because you're like, oh, I need to make the SJWs happy because I'll, I'll go help the team that they support. I've had enough winning over here anyway, so it uh, works for me. Who did he buy again? Butka and freaking Gustavo Bo and Carl Harles Gill. You know what I hope happens to you, Robert Kraft? And I'd love to hear, have the Patriots sub hear this. I hope for the next 10 years, if any of you are Revolution fans, I hope you're a little bit insulted. I hope, you, you see my uh, profile picture on my YouTube channel, okay? You know what's coming. I hope, Robert, the New England Revolution come to BMO Field for 10 years straight in the MLS Cup playoffs, and they get curb stomped. You will never be what you are in the NFL and MLS. Two reasons. One, nobody cares about the New England Revolution. Two, you're never going to be better than Toronto FC. You should have just left it alone. 
You should have kept Antonio Brown and took the flack like you normally do. But you had enough coming at you, and you had to be an SJW. It's a sad day, Robert. I hope that Tom Brady leaves and goes to the Chargers, because I can't stand you. It's all your fault. But yeah, it didn't help that Josh McDaniels lost his brain throughout the season, and Bill Belichick just didn't act like himself, and Tom Brady didn't have any weapons to help him. It's all your fault. I know that sounds crazy, but all what you did led to this. The Patriots getting cut up like a birthday cake, like a Halloween pumpkin, a Thanksgiving turkey, a Christmas ham, whatever you want to call it, that's what this was. And I do not like the way this ended. It's all your fault. It's all what it is. Exactly what it is. And I can't wait till November, October, whatever, when the second round of the MLS Eastern playoffs happen. When you go to BMO Field and every player on that pitch, Alejandro Pozuelo, Alexandra Laca Blanclazet, Josie Altador, Jonathan Osorio, Michael Bradley, Richie Larea, Justin Morrow, Omar Gonzalez, Chris Mavinga, Quentin Westberg, and whoever the else is on the right wing, I really don't, or left wing, I don't really, Subasa Endo, Erickson Gallardo, and then like three subs, yeah, they all make you cry. That's what you deserve. It's going to be a beautiful day. I don't think I've ever seen, I don't even think anybody's ever seen you cry before. It's going to be a beautiful day, at least in my eyes, because, well, you made me angry, well, it's time for my club to make you cry. You ruined a 19-0 season because of your own self-virtue that you just grew over the past year. You're a fraud. Just like Greg Vanny, I hope after that MLS Cup run, we you hire him for some reason. Because he's just like you, a fraud. We'll get Maurizio Pochettino. I mean, it works out for me. You hire our fraud because you're a fraud and we get Maurizio Pochettino or frickin' Arsene Wenger or something like that. Perfect for me. That's the last good thing you'll do for me unless you uh draft Ch Garrett Schrader, trade for Dak Prescott, or draft Trevor Lawrence. Or make Jarrett Stidham the, next, the second coming of Jesus Christ, but you're not going to do that. So um, That's not going to happen. You saw what he did against the Jets. So uh, that's how it ends, eh? Your fault making us get cut up like a Thanksgiving turkey. All right. That, that's how it ends. The Patriots grow a morality, and it makes us go completely horrible. Yeah, I know the offense was horrible for the playoffs. That's because we had no Antonio Brown. We had no Josh Gordon. Mohamed Sanu didn't do what we wanted him to. Dorsett was basically invisible. Jacoby Myers, he didn't do anything. Gunnar Olcheski got hurt. Julian Edelman got doubled everywhere. We had no tight end. Sonny Michelle can't run when he gets ran into by a defensive, a defensive lineman because he doesn't like running unless there's an open hole. James White was probably our best offensive player. <laughs> or Landon Roberts over the last eight games. Our defense kept us in the sort of mostly every game. Wow. Wow. I cannot even fathom. I cannot. I cannot. You threw away a possible 19-0 season because of self-virtue and morality. That's what you are. Okay. So, basically a fraud. Okay. Okay. And if, you, and if you hear this and you want me to turn in my Patriots fan card, if Tom Brady signs another contract with another team, I won't even wait for Dak Prescott or Garrett Schrader. Fine. Come at me. Come at me. It's probably weird to be a fan of a football, a, an American football team who's, who own, whose owner owns a rival football, actual football team in the same league. It's pretty much weird anyway, I guess. It's not as weird when Brady goes to the Chargers because, well, they won't even play at the same stadium as the LA Galaxy, but I got a lot of Galaxy fans, friends anyway. Galaxy fan friends anyway. So, uh, maybe not really as weird. But, uh, yeah, I don't think Spanos has anything to do with a uh, LA Galaxy. Yeah, I don't think so. But, um, yeah. If, if that's what you want me to do, come at me. 
Who dat? Who dat? Who dat say they gonna beat them Saints? Fine by me. I got a home in the Superdome. I got a home in the Superdome. I mean, I'm, I'm a Mississippi boy anyway. I mean, this was gonna... I'm not gonna say this was gonna happen, but... Robert Kraft, you forced my hand. Josh McDaniels, you forced my hand. Tom Brady, hope to see you in Powder Blue next year because they ain't going to help you next year either, that's for sure. They wanted this dynasty to end. Well, it ended. Simple as that. Simple as that. And I knew it was coming. We all knew it was coming, but some people wanted to stay positive because that's the way they act. Well, when it comes to New England... When I see something that's true, or like anything, when I see something that I know is going to happen, I'm going to call it out. If you know me well enough, and I saw it when it came to Miami, and I was like, I'll pick New England for this game because it's Tennessee, but I wouldn't be surprised if New England lost. Well, guess what? They lost. In a horrible fashion. The most anticlimactic way to end a dynasty ever, it got ended. That's the way it happens. Sad. We move. We move on. Sorry, Tom Brady. It just wasn't meant to be. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's everybody else's. The defense even tried to help you. It's everybody on your, uh, the other 10 people on the offense. I mean, Julian tried, so I won't blame him either. But everybody, uh, and I won't blame James Watt either. But everybody else, yeah. I think Marshall Newhouse played this game, didn't he? Yeah. Oh, definitely your fault. Um, definitely your fault, Mr. Turnstile. Um, they probably put Eric Zavaleta in your place if he less of a turnstile than you. That's a Toronto FC joke, by the way. Um, since you probably don't know. But, yeah. Everybody else but Tom Brady, Julian Edelman, and James White, on, and, Rex, and Rex Burkhead on the offensive side, it's all your fault. Defense, you're absolved. Special teams, you're absolved. It's basically the offense and Robert Kraft and Josh McDaniels. That's exactly who it is. You want to blame somebody, blame them. That's it. The dynasty is over. Happy? Everybody else? It's over. And you could call me a Fox Sports wanker or whatever the hell you want to call me. But I'm just stating the facts. Brady's gone in the spring. He's still playing, but he ain't here. He's gone in the spring. And it's exactly what it is. Sorry to tell you. That's it. It's casino hands. It's over. Call me a Max Kellerman-like wanker all you want. It's just the truth. So, if you like this video, like it, subscribe, share. You know what it is. Tell all your friends. I'm getting hate for this one, but I had to say it. And you all know it deep down. So come at me. I'm Ryan and I'm out. Peace. Robert Kraft, stick it.